products and I've seen product um, and there is nowhere in the world like California uh, as far as product variety, uh-huh. innovation, quality. Um, and the thing is, this we is have the world center of cannabis. cannabis. Smoking Let's episode. Go. Where we at? Fifteen. This That's is already crazy. episode fifteen. Oh my god! I'm here with my co-host Joey. What up, Folke? You already know who we're here with. Armin from Canico, LA Co. And how you feeling today, Armin? Very well. Thank you guys for having me. And how do you pronounce your full name, bro? For it's the people, Armin Peronian. Armin Peronian. You were close. Was, you were I, close. Bro. I was having trouble with that earlier, man. I'm trying to still get it. Hey, hey thank, thank you for having us today, man. I appreciate it. And we're about to be smoking on some of this L.A. Cannabis Co. Slushy. I'm rolling it up right now. So we're about to see what this do. And while, he, and while Joey rolls that up, I'm going to be rolling, rolling up some Space Candy from um, uh, Space Packs. Dope, dope. Excited to try that out. Something different. Yes, sir. Let's yes, go. sir. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I brought something a little different for you so you could taste out, you know. I know you'd be smoking all the stuff okay. from here, so I wanted to make sure. You guys brought the goodies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hand so, selected, it looks. Yes, Hand sir. Hand selected. Bro, I just wanted to ask myself on the way, on the drive up here from um, L.A., I'm like, man, I wonder how many, how many times you take that drive from L.A. up here to Coachella. Oh, or do you, do you stay out here in Coachella? Like, No, I, I'm in L.A., so we're, uh, I got it to where we're coming out here maybe once, maybe twice a week now. Okay. But obviously, when we were building uh, the facility out, it was, you know, a lot of trips out here, a lot of, a lot of same day back and forth. Man. I remember one day where uh, I'm, I'm in L.A., I get a call from the contractor. Hey, I think we have to tear this whole room down. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why don't you stop right there? Why don't we not tear nothing down until I get there, okay? I'm on my so way. hop in the car and, and we'll jet out, but... You know, it's uh, it's something that has to happen. You know, the owner's presence is very important in the success of a business. Mm. Uh, sometimes owners are channel people that have not been at their stores for months at a time. Where obviously, even if I'm here, maybe I'm not doing much of the day-to-day operation. But I think your presence uh, it gets uh, it leaves a good impression on the rest of the team, vice, uh, and it, that spreads over to the customer as well. Mm. Bro, you're talking that shit. But before we even get to that, bro, let's take it all the way to the beginning, bro. Before you even started even thinking of opening a shop or even opening this beautiful weed, like, what is this? Like a hangout? I could just come here and smoke weed with my friends in Coachella? Yeah, yeah. So this is one of uh, a one-of-a-kind uh, consumption lounge in the so city befo- of Coachella. So before we get into that, I want to know when was the first time you smoked? I don't even want to know first time you <laughs> made money from weed. I want to yeah, know when's the smoke. first time you fell in love with this plant. Do so you remember it? Separate things. Okay. Falling in love and first time smoking. Hey. <laughs> Two separate things. I think um, falling in love, uh, when the Kush kind of came out, I was in college. And, um, you know, I wasn't the, in, in high school, I was like, not that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't touch cannabis in high school. In college, I kind of started exploring, and that's when the relationship went to the next level. Did you play any sports in high school? I didn't play sports. I played uh, a lot of extracurricular activities, but no sports. <laughs> no, because the way you run your business and just the energy and the way... Like you just said that the bringing the energy from the boss, it trickles down to the employees. Yeah. And we we went to all three of your dispensaries in Los Angeles. And, bro, you feel the energy when you walk into Appreciate each shop. That. You could tell somebody gives a fuck and comes from the culture. That's yeah. why today's episode, get ready, guys. There's a lot of gems that you're going to get from the CEO himself going from traditional to legal to yeah. a, all of a, that. a lounge in Coachella. Like, bro, it's crazy in here. Sure. It's crazy. Look, so he has three shops in uh, L.A., and then this is one you said that is a different partnership, right? Yeah, this is a different partnership out here. We have a local partner here in Coachella as well. So we, we started this venture in 2020. 
So it does take a long time in today's cannabis world to come to market. Um, you have to go through the local regulations, then you go through the state regulations, then you actually have to build these facilities and make the building inspectors happy with what you're doing. Mm. Um, and then now we added this whole new level of consumption lounge. Yeah. So we had the health department involved because we have a kitchen next door as well. Yeah, yeah so shout we out to the chick next door, man. Thank you yeah. for the drinks. Shout out to the we, we, drinks, we, bro. We added a lot more layers. Um, so it's uh, kind of peeling that onion to get to that uh, certificate of occupancy. You need the fire marshals to sign off. Yeah. So the, there was uh, different hurdles and uh, it takes time. It takes uh, capital to make yeah. this happen. What you think is going to cost you X ends up costing you Z. Mm. Um, so definitely we're self-funded. So it's all private uh, money for me and my partner. So <laughs> yeah. making that happen. Um, it's you Shout gotta, out to you and your partners on not giving up. Because like you just said previously to private funding, like expecting something to cost A and for it to cost Z. Yeah. Bro, that right there could just make a... a, a, a a pussy nigga quit. Yeah, a lot of people would have quit. And trust me, it, it runs through your mind. You're like, shit, I might be better off backing out, savor what I got. Right. But yeah. we kept pushing. Uh, we kept pushing to, to make it happen. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Yeah, Thank so you. it's, real, it's definitely uh, uh, the entrepreneur life is not for everybody. But I think once you, uh, once you do the entrepreneur uh, or entrepreneurship, um, it, 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 is, uh, it is rewarding, right? Yes, sir. You get to build something. Um, when, when you create, you're kind of living, you know. I feel like when I'm not creating anything, I don't feel as alive as I do when I'm, like, creating. And obviously, you yeah. need money to make that happen. Bro, you make the dream come alive, you know. I'm a videographer, and I'm an actor, I'm an editor, I'm, I'm, I'm a producer. Now we do this podcast, but, bro, right now... Revitalize your hydration routine with H-Factor water packed with the power of hydrogen. It's not just water. It's a boost for your energy and well-being. Say hello to a more vibrant you with every sip of H-Factor water. Try it now and experience hydration like never before. Available at leading stores near you. H-Factor water, back to the podcast. No, I could tell you, bro, financially, it ain't my, my hottest d- winter. But, bro, the fact we're creating, the fact we got yeah. flow, the fact we got motion, I don't need a, not a quarter, nigga. And, yeah. and I'm... Risking every day, risking every drive, but when you know there's something bigger and you have people that are on the same mission with yeah. you, that, that energy's hard to stop. But before we get into all the business and all the greedy, I still want to know the first time you fell in love with cannabis and okay. the first time you smoked okay. that thing. So first time I smoked, uh, I think it was my summer before going to high school. I'm playing basketball at the neighborhood uh uh, I think it was the elementary we used to hop the fence and just What play. city? What city are you from? Um, I grew up in uh, Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm an L.A. native. Grew up in the, in the valley. So um, oh, yeah. Fire, we, yes, I sir. think I was Panorama City back then. Hey, that's where I'm from, out, nigga. Yeah. That's hey, where we Shout from. out to the 818. We to Panorama 818. City. 818. 818. I went to Van Nuys go. High School. Oh, no shit. I went to Van Nuys High School for two years, too. <laughs> 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 it was uh, Van Nuys High School slash County. Yeah. Hey, 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 was, uh, hey, that's funny you say that. My last high school it happens to be the crossover to county jail. <laughs> Transitioning. Bro. Yeah, it's a crazy it's transition. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we, we made it through. You know, it's, everything's a life experience. That's how he I take it. <laughs> we made it through. For real, for real. Right. So, uh, yeah, I was very young. Obviously, all the, all the kids were just playing ball. And, of course, I get caught. By my parents, because I have a little sack in my sock. Uh-oh. Oh, the shit. first time in, you get caught. Okay, that's not a great sign. So, <laughs> Haven't really, we all been caught? That's really, the funny uh, part. You know, when the Kush came in the market and we were paying $30 a gram all the way up, that's when I kind of uh, fell into really uh, having a passion for the plant. I think it, I want to say it's 2005. Nice. Five, right? When the Kush was just like, eh, everyone was like, what? Kush, Kush, Kush. And, and evolving, because right before that, what were we, chronic? Oh, it was that, you know, <laughs> that $50 eighth, which was like. You're like, what? Ugh. But we knew. Yeah. Right? Like, it's green. How did, that, how did that feel for you when you were like, wait, there's a difference out here in the weed? Like, Oh, yeah. So, obviously, the medical scene in Los Angeles started very early. That's how I kind of got into the industry. Um, so, I had my... Uh, my recommendation, and I was going to Cal State Northridge, and oh, there's shit. dispensaries popping up everywhere, everywhere, right? So I'm like, no, I got to go in there, bro. I got to see what this shit's all about. Yeah. Yeah. So I go in, and of course, I like my business side. I've been business guy forever. I mean, selling stuff on eBay when people were like, eBay what? I was like selling stuff at 
Uh, so you're very savvy. You're, you, 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 you were early on this. Early, 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 early. So as soon as ambition. I got in there, I'm like, oh, no, this is the business that I want to I wanna be involved with. So I started uh, poking my nose around, and next thing you know, I find out that my family friend is getting into the business. Mm. Oh, um, so he just got in. So I go talk to him. He's like, yeah, come check out my shop. I go check it out. And a funny story, his partner who was robbing him dry at the time because he didn't really know the industry. He's a contractor. Oh, yeah. damn. He just puts the money up. He doesn't know the industry. So he was like, yeah, come check out my shop. And we check it out. And his partner literally tried to uh, pitch me another shop. And he was like, oh, you want to get involved in this industry? So I'm like, what? Like, that's weird because that's not how we roll. You know, usually it's like, hey, yeah. you know, let's, that's the guy who put me on. Let's, let's talk. So he tried to pitch me. So I go to my cousin. I'm like, hey, your partner, like, pitched me a deal. Mm. Yeah. He's like, what? This piece of shit is robbing us dry. We're trying to figure out how to get him out with the attorneys. Oh, and I'm my like, Fuck God. It. Let's get this guy out. I'll come in. Yeah. <laughs> so we literally, you know, everything back then was, was all under uh, my cousin's name. So he was just like, let's do it. So we changed the locks and kicked these fools out. Damn, oh, and that's shout how the out partnership to that. started. And, 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 that shit, that and, shit got and, real right there, huh? Yeah. And wait, bro, so this is a family partnership. Yeah, my two of my partners uh, are, are are my first cousins. Bro, talk about that. Because you know normally, what? you know, you want to pick up that phone and be like... Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely... Uh, but if it's family, it's, it's, it's different. Look, a, a business with family, there is a big... Uh, Ta- or I don't want to say taboo, but like people always promote, oh, don't do business with family. Right, right. I've had a very good successful Success with run family. with family. Obviously, um, there are pros and cons, but if it sinks, um, those are going to be the best partnerships, right? Because yeah. the trust already right off the bat. And trust yeah. me, I've had family uh, rob from me. I've had everybody like it's part of the this game. industry. You can't trust anybody, Every, but yeah. when you build that strong trust, um, that's when it's the opportunities are, are, are endless, you know? I call it when everybody's on the same page, like, you know? When everybody's on the same page and getting shit to it and getting money, ain't going to be no problems, but... Something that I really like that he said, um, even family has taken from me, just because your family doesn't mean it's going to work, but yeah. I like what you said. Even though it has bad taboo around it, fuck it. And something, yeah. before the podcast started, I asked you, I was like, yo, what's your ethnicity? You're like, oh, I'm Armenian, and I have Armenian friends out there so i i know how you guys are very tight already so normally if i was to be in vegas gambling i hate to be hella racist right now but the the slots will be full i'm gonna put more money on uh you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying i'm gonna put my money uh, over here because you guys already move a certain way because i went to madison middle school so already growing up um, half of my friends were either. So you're a bulldog. I'm a bulldog, Papa. Oh. <laughs> and we oh, went there right too. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, well, hockey team. So I play. I play beer league, and the team started. The mascot. Our team is bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. Everybody there went to Madison. Bro. That's funny, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's Where do you guys play hockey at? We play at the uh, in Van Nuys. Okay. Valley Ice Center. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you know what I like about that area? You wouldn't think that sh- that si- ice skate ring would even be there. Oh yeah, it's been there for a long it was time. Forever history. And people life. actually Shout do play hockey out, out here. That place alive. That's yeah, nah, and, and actually people do play hockey because I've been up in there and motherfuckers be getting oh, the game on. League. It's yeah, that's what I, I've been seeing it. Yo, bro, a game tonight, bro. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> hey, we gotta go catch that <laughs> shit, bro. Oh shit, I, I'm gonna go catch that. Is this smoking exclusive? Oh, here, Y'all gonna hey, see us on the ice. I need you to spark this. This is a space pack. Ooh, you know this it. is that space pack. Shout out to G Money, man. Shout out to Grant, bro. What you got going on right now? It speaks for itself, and we're happy to be passing this to the CEO to, to get his true reaction. And, don't, and give us the truth, bro. If that shit's whack, say the truth. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's important. Yo, you lighting up with the matches. That's old school. You know. I like that. That's swag. <laughs> matches. Hold on. We, we gonna need, uh, is it smoking matches, DJ? Shout out to our producer, DJ, man. Huge producer, man. Making shit happen, man. Is it crazy? You're giving the show structure. Man, this giving us structure. You can already taste it? No, it's really good. Oh, already. What's the strength? That's a that was a space candy, right? Yes, sir. That is that the was space, space candy. candy. Space candy. For Shout space out to packs. Grand Space Packs. Oh, it smells amazing, bro. It smells amazing. No, that's a uh, that's a grade. That's there right there, space candy. So I had a question. Uh, you they you're on the board of the UCBA. Talk about how how it was to get on the board and people voting you in on that. And hold up, hold up. 
what the fuck is even the board, nigga? What, are we, yeah. like, UC, what is UCBA? Like, huh? Yeah. What so is the, the UCBA? Uh, United Cannabis Business Association. So it's a... Uh, <coughs> hey, that's face facts. Kicked in a little late. I like, I like how you lit it with a match. Is that like just for a healthier way to like get the cleaner smoke or just yeah, fuck you know, it? Sometimes the butane. Yeah, yeah. I like that's to right. avoid it if I can. Yeah, At yeah. Home, I'll, I have a little wick. The hemp even wick. And if I'm even if I'm lighting a joint, because if I use a lighter, I let the first like four or five smokes go. You know what I do when I use a lighter? I be just right there like sparking it until I see that shit stuck. lit. Yeah. Hey, hold up, y'all talking some shit. Y'all see me in the middle? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I peep that. So I peep every way how people smoke. Yeah. So it's like you know I seen you. I was like he probably don't fuck with the butane. Yeah, I try not to. I try not to. But back to UCBA. Um, so it's the United Cannabis Business Association. It is a trade association of uh, retailers. So it represents about 60 dispensaries in the city of L.A. Whoa. Um, it's got a group out of Santa Ana that it represents. And then it's part of a coalition out here, which is the Coachella Valley Association, which I'm involved with as well. Mm. And um, I became elected as an executive board member um, back in 2020. Um, and the, the group's been around since 2018 in legalization. So this group actually funded the ballot initiative that allowed for recreational cannabis in the city of L.A. So when Prop, uh, Prop 64 passed legislatively, cities had a certain amount of time to get their uh, regulations in place or they were going to miss out on that boat of the first sales, right? And, yeah. you guys, and you guys made that boat. So we made that happen with the trade association. So everyone kind of, hey, you're putting together money. There's a lot of grassroots stuff happening. Mm. Uh, the unions got involved as well. Mm. Um, that's how I built my relationship with the unions and kind of our dispensaries. But um, I've been on the board. It's a all volunteer work that I do. I actually pay to be on the association. Yeah. And the extra work is all work that I put in Obviously, I could be focusing on my business, but this is more like macro level stuff that won't affect the business this second. But in like six, in the 12, future, 18 months, these rules and regulations like you'll wake up. The city of L.A. just dropped the new regs like a week ago, bro, dropping new rules, reiterating yeah. about different events, different. They don't want people doing DJs or events and all these extra rules. Right, yeah. right. And even, uh, not to cut you off, but even like uh, with the logos that you, uh, they're telling brands to kind of stay oh, away yeah. from action figures and logos. Right, right. They want you to be more plain cut, more boring, kind of more corporate. So Come there on, was, Chad. There was, uh, there was a there was a bill in Sacramento that was going to totally destroy the industry as far as the way the words could be labeled, restricting the size of the font, restricting the colors, oh, the shit. ways things could be approached. Yeah. Luckily, the industry and UCBA, we fought very hard to get that bill thrown out, right? Um, we need to understand. So a lot of times, these legislators, they're going to go with whoever's in the room, mm. whoever's the loudest, right? So a lot of times, these uh, um, advocacy groups come in and uh, they'll – butcher things up and not knowing things, right? Like, at the hearing for the bill, the, the advocacy groups were, like, bringing basically s samples of different jars out, and half the cannabis there was, like, illicit, right? So first thing we got to say, uh-uh, that that's ain't not legal. It. Like, hey, it's missing the seals, it's missing this. Like, bring real legal brands and say, okay, you're violating the rules. Mm. There's no need for this because the, the rules are already pretty clear. You can't be appealing to children mm -hmm. for certain things. Okay, and if there's individual brands that have products, the state has the authority to go and take it. Them, hey, mm -hmm. change it up, right? Mm -hmm. They usually give notices. I mean, the industry wants to, the regulators want to work with you. It's just the industry is massive, bro. Mm. It's big. Mm -hmm. So it's a big undertaking. When we talk it's about billions, work, it's easy to say a billion yeah. when you actually want to capital uh, okay, gather it up. Let's, let's, let's make a billion it. actually generate. Um, it's a big ship, right? Yeah. You're talking a lot of people that are involved in the industry, um, and there's a handful of regulators. So my, the work I do there, um, you know, I, 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 I'm grateful that my peers want me involved, right. but I also do it because it puts me at a competitive advantage. Mm. So I'm always uh, learning kind of ahead, ahead of the game, you know? Right. But not just ahead of the game. I kind of look at you as like the Bruce Wayne of weed, bro. Batman of weed. Because you're fighting the good fight at night. And Thank none you. of us know these yeah, things that you... a lot of people don't know. And you're doing it at your at your, at your Yeah, you're volunteering. At your shit. voluntarily time. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you got a family and stuff, right? Yeah. Bro, yeah. that's... We're putting in extra time that... But he's doing it for the future, for the, you yeah, know? Yeah, for the future, like he said, to have that competitive edge. So that already lets me know the... 
you got that Kobe Mamba mentality, nigga. Hey, that, that's how you know when we're from LA, you know? I know when I'm around it. Yep. You I know feel when it. I'm around it. I appreciate that, bro, because I do actually look up to Kobe and a lot of uh, his words and different podcasts he's done and all the all the free game that he puts out there. And he um, puts a lot time, of game out there, man. Like Every time I want to be like, ah, it, it's in my head, like, oh, shit, dude. And, and it's crazy because I feel like that's an LA thing, you know? Like, yeah, it is. The it way is. we look at Kobe is like, Almost like a god in L.A., bro. Yeah. It's crazy because yeah. if you carry like that, I he carry, we all carry. We all have a little mamba in us. But, yeah. not, but not just that. We need it. We need it. We, we need a mamba during that time. During that time in history in L.A. We were just coming out of Rodney King getting beat up. Kobe was a, like his hard work, bro. You you yeah. could be Chinese and fuck with Kobe. You could be I was Dominican fucking with Kobe. Everybody Max fucked with Kobe. Armenians fucked with Kobe. Kobe unified and meant so much, bro. Kobe like, brought everybody together, bro. When you think about it, even to this the day, the, the day he passed the away, show. nigga, I, it felt like nah. Everybody, everybody remembers that day. It, it's like yeah. it's like a day a cousin died or something knows, or a brother. Knows the day you're like nigga. January, I think it was 26. I don't remember the day, nigga. I remember how I felt. Yeah. Nah. I, I remember up. the day, feeling everything. Fucked. Uh, bro, my boy called me. I was in the shower, bro. It was so weird. He's like, oh, why you asking your homie phone calls? Bro, I had to because he was blowing me up. Oh, and then he's all like, man, man. he's all like, bro. What is about? He's like, Kobe died, bro. And I was like, no, you're lying. Nah, yeah, I was like, was I got to get out the shower. <laughs> I was like, this is it's crazy. Serious. It was serious. Damn, bro. But uh, back, to, back to you doing fighting that good work and being the marijuana <laughs> Batman that none of us really knew you was out here fighting that fight, bro. And something you mentioned earlier that I really liked is that you're part of this thing that everybody's voluntarily being a part of, but it's easy to like receive money and be like, okay, cool, thanks, homie. Just sit right here. Yeah, we have our meetings, and, and, and niggas kind of yeah. punk you. What Something I, he said that was really cool was these niggas, all, not niggas, these people all voluntarily voted me yeah. into the top chairs and the top conversation. And talk a little bit about that. Like, well, why why were these people volunteering to you? Yeah, How did they knew you? How did they knew you were gonna talk that good shit? What past experiences or what reputations? Like why? Like you know what I'm saying? Why Thanks. you? Why I, not your I, cousin? I appreciate that, and I think it's a really um, the actual engagement, right? Like you have to actually engage. Like you said, just being in the room is not enough. So I've uh, participated in these type of associations in uh, Florida as well, and when I was out there. Um, in the medical t 2012, um, before I lost like a hundred grand and decided to get out of the state before they robbed the rest of my money. Oh, oh, in Florida? Florida's for, you know, it's big boy stuff out there for sure. I went in, I put a lot of my own money up and then it didn't the work whole, out. the world there wasn't for different. me. Yeah. Mm. It is a different world. Yeah, yeah. Um, different culture for sure. Yeah. The cannabis culture is obviously underground and hidden there. So them yeah. trying to do the medical and I was trying to get involved but it what part of florida um obviously tallahassee is the capital that's where i spent a lot of my time because i was involved with the associations there as well and it's like mm. the executive director of that association was like look you could pay 10 grand to be in this room because that's what it costs to be in the room that's the annual membership fee um but if you don't make nothing out of it you might as well have just fucking went somewhere else and kicked it, right? Like, Damn. you have to make the room, right? So if you're in there to, mm. if, if the back end is networking, right, that's like your little bonus on the back because you're meeting people that are in the industry where a lot of people will pay a lot of money to be in a room with a bunch of retailers, right? Like, people are going to pay yeah, for that of access. Yeah, because they so, can go and work the room and, and close the next and, year. Yeah, but then obviously the one coming at you as a straight door-to-door -door salesman it's not going to be a success. It's not going to work, right? No, no, so those no. are all relationships you built uh, and you build on them. Especially in the weed business. Right. Me? I know, I, I don't really know from like the the like the, the, the rooms you're talking about, but I, I'm talking about like the, the, the more legacy people. How bougie are them, you know? So <laughs> I can cool kids, the cool kids. Super cool kids. That, like, so I can only imagine those, how. Those meetings probably are crazy. The cool kids slash like Harvard cool kids. Yeah, yeah, it's the cool kids. A lot of, so a lot of the members are all legacy operators. Uh, I think the newest operator maybe started in 2012 or 13. Wow. Um, so a lot of the guys on the on the association are like original 07 registrants like us. Because um, so the original founders of the company are still on the board today of our company. So wow. 2007, 
uh, people were very scared to go to the city and register their business, right? We were, of course uh, not. We, 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 people thought it was still a trap. Like, hold up, right. are they really about people to thought they were going to set you up, man. You yeah. go in there to register, and next thing you they know, know they know where you at. Yeah, they know where you at. Your home address, your ID, what the hell? He said they know where you at. <laughs> so this people what you're were scared, doing? <laughs> but I knew that this was going to happen, and I knew the fact that the city taking that step they're, 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 it meant that they wanted to turn this into a revenue generating sector for the industry, right? So that's when they decided that they were going to start taxing. Um, so uh, when that registration opportunity came, you know, we, we, we went and we registered uh, our dispensary. And, uh, and that's kind of where the path to medical legalization uh, started. Fire. So a lot of those people I met all from that era. And... Um, throughout the years, uh, we were getting like 12 people in the room, 20 people in the room. And then next thing you know, we're having 30, 40, 50 people in the room making things happen. Wow. Um, there's obviously a lot less engagement now. That's a lot, a lot of, of money in there. Owners have kind of moved on from the space. It's, it's not for everybody. Not every operator pivoted or made the adjustments. Mm. And they were like, you know what, I'm out. Which, Damn. look, uh, that's everyone's personal choice, obviously. Um, there's pros and cons to each side, right? You mm -hmm. go, <laughs> you mm -hmm. go, you go traditional. It's got its pros and cons. You go legal. It's got its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. We made that decision, and when legalization happened, uh, that we were gonna go the full legal path, and we kind of built our business that way, pivoted. But really, every year since legalization has been kind of different. Mm. It, it's just been revolving. It was like transition period where you could have the old packaging, then the new packaging came in, new testing standards came in, then the new third tier of testing standards came in. Facts. Uh, exit bags started changing. Uh, they had all these different rules about metric and how things could be even displayed. A lot of evolution is happening, happening, and it's... Wow, you're in really, it. Really, we're, we're, we're babies, really, right? Facts. Like, if you look at other industries, alcohol's, you know, about to be 100 years old, right? So uh, yeah. we're still a baby. Um, obviously, things move a lot faster than they used to yep. it, the world yeah, it caught up it 10 years i look back at emails from 10 years ago and i'm like what the hell was i doing <laughs> right like, like it's so right, funny you what say are that we doing over here right, no right, but it's right, so right, funny right. you so say that every 10 years we we get advanced it's speeding up so the industry is definitely going to speed up and for me um i i made the decision to continue to be in the industry as long as i i enjoy it mm. so as soon as i stop enjoying it so you guys know I'll be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a I have a question. So say someone that's starting and just wanting, like you know, say partner with a brand like yours, or even to sit at that table. Like, how do they go about that for just someone like sitting at home watching and trying to figure it all out? Just like you know. Yeah. You know what? I, it's funny you say that. I, at least I could speak for the people that I know as far as UCBA, um, and even me. I'm very welcoming to people that want to come into the industry, and yeah. I'm very. Uh, What's the word I want to say? I, I'm very, like, generous with my information. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you how I did it. I'll tell you what I did. I'll, I'll refer you to the consultant who filled out my applications. Yeah. Like, I don't. Gatekeep. It doesn't matter for me as far as I don't have that, oh, I'm, I make it difficult. Like or, that or, ego or, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it is a tough space. Um, you have to like what you're doing. Yep. If you're going to come into the legal space, the margins get tighter. Mm. So the ship has to be tighter or you're not going to turn a profit. Yeah. Mm. Right? So everything has to be tighter, tighter, tighter. So we've had years of fine-tuning the cost, really understanding what margins we have to be at, and um, sometimes not fast enough. Right? Yeah. Like, you could be a quarter or two past, and you're like, oh, shit, are we going to have a quarter like this? You know? Yeah. Um, so it, it, we've learned to adapt faster. Um, watching, uh, obviously, the price determines a lot as far as the financials yeah. of the industry. We have a product that goes up and down in price. And right yeah. now, it's at an all-time low. Yeah, so you have the commodity side of it, and then you have the branding side, which is a whole different world, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you know how to brand, I'm sure you can brand uh, any product you want or, like, creating a brand or marketing, or I'm sure they're, they are two different things, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but if you know either... <laughs> you're winning, right? Oh, yeah. You're marketing, you're going to win. And you I know. and I seen you guys have events coming up for, you know, for the community and that puff and paint and all the stuff yeah. you guys are doing. That's dope, you know, what you guys are doing out here, especially in the lounge. You get to get some weed, you know, 
smoke right here, probably even yeah. run into Armin, bro, and ask him a few questions. You never know. Yeah, catch me on the weekdays, dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you talk might... about that a little bit. Smoke and paint. Hold on. The yeah. puff and paint, right? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, talk about we have that a event. Puff and paint here at the Consumption Lounge here in Coachella. Obviously, the lounge space gives us flexibility. Really, when we uh, built this place, we built it as a event space slash oh, that's dope. lounge, a place for people to express uh, how so, they want so the to event happens here, right? The event happens here. The event happens here. We've had a lot of different type of events. We do uh, customer appreciation days where we're like, just every brand is just giving out shit for customers yeah. that day. Um, we'll do like stuff with uh, different associations. We did uh, some stuff for Metallica when they were out here. That's Puff fire. and Paint's been really popular. Um, That's dope. People are like paying 50 bucks to come and paint and smoke here. That's so fine. We were like, when, when we did the first one, we were like, you think we'll sell 16 tickets? <laughs> they were like, yo, that thing sold out already. No this way. going to be 25 tickets. So, so people get to pay 50 bucks and they get, uh, you guys provide the weed, yeah, right? We, we provide uh, uh, cannabis for them to smoke. We provide, um, there's an actual local artist that's actually coordinating the puff and paint. So it's not like, a, oh, we're slapping some canvases together. It's like yeah. a real... Artists, they'll give you the oh, idea, yeah. the vision, the, all the tools. And networking, tools, you know, just bring, oh, being, in, being in here. We provide uh, some refreshments, some food, the, the weed, nice music. And yeah, everyone you, just kind of sits out and does his thing, dude. That's what's up. Something you were talking about earlier that caught my attention again, bro. Uh, bro, you move very traditionally, bro. You're very about the culture. Even though you're in those room with these chads and these people making changes, I'm glad you're in there for us. Again, you're the you're the you're the Batman for us, bro. Because you said, bro, this this space was built to be a, a community space for, for for weed. It wasn't never a dispensary. That yep. came second. Yep. Talk a little bit about that. That's crazy. Yeah. So when we when we built the vision, uh, obviously the space is massive. Um, and in yeah. 2020, it was it, it was a different world in cannabis. Let's uh, a mindset as a business person, right? So obviously now economics of things and. We have to, uh, when, we, when we built this place and the applications came out and this real estate, because of the zoning, was the place to be. So it's like, what do you do with a space this big, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's huge, so bro. we brought the architects in, um, the design team, and they came <laughs> out with a few different ideas. And we're like, look, this is a lounge first, mm. a dispensary second, mm. right? So when we built it out, we were like, hey, how do we make it like that? I looked like I walked the into glass, like a right? like a Starbucks. It, it makes you feel I like swear. I was like, this is thank Starbucks you. here. <laughs> I appreciate that. We so so a lot of thought was put into this. Uh, we were just talking about that like an hour ago when the one of the staff was like, we have a new hire, and he was like, yeah, this place is amazing, man. And I'm like, you, every little detail was so much thought yeah. back and forth, right? Because when you have time to plan. Things are a little different. Like that's true. We had time. It was like yeah. we submitted the app, and then we have like six, seven months of, like, nothing happening because oh. we have to get our approvals. Time to brainstorm. Right, That's so funny. every step, and then when you're actually, like, on the ground, I think that last two weeks when you're opening, right, I was literally out here the, the whole time. But uh, we built this space. The, the building has 182-person occupancy. So we can have a lot of people in here. 182? And then, that's uh, crazy. Bro, 182 I, people fit in here? But I don't even yes, know restaurants that space, hold that right? many people. Damn. So the, the, by, the fire code allows the occupancy level. So we fit, we fit in 200. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we fit in, we packing it out. Uh, you know that, and then somebody at the door, and, and as people leave, people could come back in. Be like, yeah, yeah, so uh, when we did an event, we, we had hundreds of people come through in a few hours because yeah. The, ba the space is built for the, obviously, the, for the, the for festivals. The, the festivals have um, a big impact to the economy here. For, like, Coachella and all the right, little Coachella. events. Oh. So we, we, we're, we're built for that season uh, to be able to maximize. How, how, how is it in that season? It's, it's so it was great. our grand it's opening when the festival happened. So how we was that? The festival. Let's hear that. Oh, the festival was amazing. You know, people are coming in uh, from all over. Like, we had people in here from India, bro, from, like, wow. New York. They're here from Toronto. They're here from everywhere. And yeah. they're just, like, people are here from Colorado. They're like, i never seen this, bro. Weed's been legal there for 10 years. Yeah. Right? They're yeah. tripping out. So, obviously, people haven't seen just, like, 
this is the, the lounge is the wow factor, right? We didn't right, build yeah. a, a stizzy shop with thousand screens. Yeah. Like that wasn't our goal, right? right? This like, is we dope. We could have done a bunch of screens there, right? That was just like we want the wow factor to be the lounge, the experience in here. You being in here and smoking. And the moments. This this room is about the moment. You could feel like. Like, yo, what happened? Where did you meet that one guy that gave you all that million dollars? Bro, we were at that one lounge, lounge. nigga, in Coachella, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, this room has that essence. Right? Yeah. It's it's not, it's a nice place, but it's not West Hollywood. Like, yeah. you've been to some of them there. It's like, yeah. okay, am I going to, like, a $1,000 dinner or yeah. am I, like, here to just smoke a joint? Right. Yeah. So you walked into some of them, it's like, there's a host to the host. And I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's nah, but this is host. dope. So, like, when people, yeah. like, you know, come from the <laughs> no, festivals, right. they have something to, to do and shit, you know? But not just something to do when you come when you come from from anywhere in the world and and you come for the festivals. You give them you that can, experience. You, not just the experience. You where can you legally smoke weed? Not in the hotel. They're gonna charge yeah. you in the car. A cop's gonna pull up to the car. This gives you a place to vibe, my it nigga. Was, it was literally so. I spent that whole week out here. And it was home based for a lot of people, bro. Yeah. You see? It was home base. Bro. I was seeing some of the dudes go and they're coming back like a little out of it. They're just like, give me a joint, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sleep, you know? You see? That's, not, a, that's I funny. I saw the before and after on a few people. Was, Feel me? Even me, if, if I, if during Coachella, I will come set up my little computer up like you said earlier, yeah. like it's Starbucks. Because yeah. it's the weed. You don't and know who's going to come right through here. that door, bro. And nah, that's dope. That's it's a good layered. it's a good ass idea what you got going here and then you got the food, you got the it's Talk it's about all. the food next door. Yeah, so we did a, a partnership with a restaurant called Chick Next Door. It's a Nashville hot chicken restaurant. It started in LA. It's uh, chef made. Everything's done like so the food is what got us to partnership because we ate the food and we we're like, wow. This yeah. drink too, it's yeah, it's gas. Well, what's organic, this raspberry? Right? From uh, it's made from scratch, raspberries and and blueberries. Yeah, it's so they'll gas. make the 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 seasonal lemonade is made fresh daily. Um, the tenders mm. are antibiotic free, never frozen. The ba- the the be- the bread is baked fresh daily. The coleslaw is made fresh. Mm. Everything's scratch. So. The content. Have a capa baby, baby, be a billionaire. Have a capa baby, buy me, baby, be a billionaire. Have a capa baby, buy me, baby, be a billionaire. Have a capa baby, be, be, be a billionaire. Yo, let's take a quick second to shout out our sponsors, man. The podcast is going amazing. Shout out to DJ, let him know, man. One of our top producers, he's killing it. Kappa Clothing. All right, listen up. It's time to step up your style game with Kappa, people. We're talking about next level fashion here. Comfort, check. Style, double check. Whether you're owning the streets or dominating the gym, Kappa's got your back. Get your swagger on, folks. Elevate your wardrobe with Kappa, because you deserve nothing but the best. Have a Kappa, baby, be, be a billionaire. Have a Kappa, baby, buy me, baby, be a billionaire. You feel me? Shout out DJ, let them know. We out here killing them. City to city, block by block, we the road runners you want on your team. Is it smoking podcast? Now let's get back to the zone. Billionaire bear. Except was like restaurant quality, fast food, mm. right? How do we do that? Um, it's a li- little more expensive than the fast food. Yeah. We're serving it in the same kind of convenience. Mm. Um, and we've noticed that you know customers are willing to pay for the quality. Mm. If the just, option is there. Just like good weed. Yeah. Just like good weed. You right. got stuff to go get your eye, you know, or you got stuff that's going to, you know, so, make, a, make a statement when you walk in the room. Yeah. So the opportunity kind of played in with one another. I... Uh, got involved with the restaurant business and the timing of this project. And then this used to be, a, a, it was a gentleman's club, then a nightclub, then a restaurant, then a night gentleman's club again. Um, so it had a full kitchen. I knew there was an energy ah! in here. We, we I already, knew I felt some said, type we, of energy he said, here. he said it earlier. He said, this used to be a strip club. I was like, damn, ah! <laughs> shit happening here already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we did a, Crazy. what's the sage? We did a sage walk, right? <laughs> <laughs> sage walk. Here, right? He had everybody up in here, huh? Just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, this is fire, bro. Now I see why the chairs are a little leaned back. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun right now. They're gonna we gotta let a, uh, get to know Armin. So, what type of music do you like listening to on a daily basis? You know, like what do you like to like you know vibe oh, to? Yeah. What's I'm, your playlist looking like? You know, I'm I'm from I'm from the '90s, right? So I always got my '90s favorites. Um, a lot of the game, Fifty Cent stuff was like when I All was the, like, oh yeah, yeah. In high school. Yeah. Boom, I still listen to that jams. shit every day. Yeah, I love it. Don't know all his stuff. <laughs> I, I like a lot of the future stuff. Is definitely shit I could vibe with. Yeah, you, 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 you fuck with the new. You fuck with the newer music. 
kind yeah, of. Yeah, I fuck with a little bit of the newer stuff for sure. Definitely. They got some bangers. It. Sometimes it's a little it's bit too much, you know, but Lil shit. Baby has some cool stuff. I be that fucking like with it. I be doing a little bit too. <laughs> I'll even listen to some Gunner. I don't care. Yeah, 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 I don't care either, ah. man. And then on my well, sp- once once people wasn't tripping off six nine, I was like, okay, cool. So we don't yeah, care, we yeah, don't care that, no more. Hey, that we, was, don't, we don't care. Okay, fuck it. Literally, hey, that's funny you say that. That's fuck you, man. <laughs> 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 so what? Uh, f- as far as for your brand too, like what what's a collab you guys are working on in the future? A dream collab you guys want to work on? Uh, you know what? I think right now the next big thing for us is to really nail a good partnership with uh, Concentrates. Okay. I never dabbled with the concentrate kind of white labeling uh because um a concentrate smokers are they take it very serious serious so we just did not want to you know the flower i'll stand behind it any day matt i'll go pound for pound whatever yeah i'll do it right so whoever wants to do it well let's do it let's do a blind test i'll do it but with the concentrates if we're not in full control of the situation um i think it was too difficult for us we, we, you know we've had a lot of opportunity to do different partnerships where we're like ah oh, the consistency this i know i can consistently provide what mm. i'm providing yes, even if it's off a little bit for yeah. the most part it's within a parameters facts that, that, that i'm comfortable with or it's not going to make the shelves so just um, concentrates right now huh i think that's the next big thing for us we're looking at the right team somebody that can like we can be a part of the supply chain like i know what is going to actually be extracted and it's our genetics mm. um then we can stand a little behind it. Or if it is someone else's genetics, something that we know is consistent. And, um, and even flour, just like flowers, we have like uh, some of the mid-grades that we source and repackage yeah. to b- bring the value price to, to the consumer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even that, I have to go to the farm. Yeah. I have to see it. There's just no way I'm going to do the big box. Yeah. And destroy weed. You got, you got, um, yeah, you got to see what, gotta see it, you, know? you got to see what they're running, you know. We got to see it. Talk about, talk about. We got to smoke it. And, and talk about that, that, um. That that um I want to say that workflow that checklist that QC yeah you know like how you just said it right now because uh, I'm not gonna let that slide for the people that picked it up picked it up but you said that I'm not about to go pick up that distro box yeah. we know them boxes <laughs> them niggas you talking about yeah you know talking about it's the distro boxes for sure talk about going to the farm looking at that pack per, per pack. Pack per pack, yeah. pound per pound, and saying, nah, this is what... Or, yeah, like, how do you go is. about your QC? Like, would you go yeah. over there and so see the work obviously, step by step? I've been in the cannabis industry for 16 years. We're growers by nature. Um, I don't do the day-to-day growing. I've worked with different growers. Mm. But I know the process in the grow room from A to Z. Uh, through the whole process, I know when and what stage, where we're supposed to be at. Mm. Um, I've seen a lot of cannabis. <laughs> okay. And I used to do all the buying when it was back buying yeah. in the medical era. So I know quality cannabis. So um, that kind of, and our buyer has been along the process with us through the whole 16 years. Damn. Plus the process as well. Yeah. Um, one of the founders is doing uh, the buying now, still today. So there's a lot of QC with that happens. We also do secondary QC where we buy all our flour at one, our own distro, so we actually get to see and um, not accept product that doesn't meet the bar. Yeah. Um, we will open up a case. If it's packaged flour, um, we, we look at all the jars. That's like what's if up. there's a majority um, or if there's jars that we catch, for the most part, we're going through most of it. We have a big facility. Um, all the product gets laid out. Obviously, it's to verify the metric information because there will be product that's mislabeled. Mm. Um, so when there is a mislabel, the person that is re- liable is the retailer. Mm. So the grower will mess something up. If you press that receive button, that shit's on you. <laughs> so you, there's been a lot of times you'll get stuck with some something shit. that technically you can't sell. Yeah, mm-hmm. some shit. <laughs> um, right? So that, that QC is very important. So instead of having... If you have multi locations and, and you can't be everywhere at once, um, I can't put that responsibility on the store managers per se. I think it's too much. A, there's a space issue for receiving product in today's world. Uh, 10 pounds before used to be a little duffel bag. 10 pounds now is like a fucking pallet. Right? Just, the weed just got. Yeah, because of the jars oh, the packaging, and, and the right? packaging and, right, and, the, right, and the professionalism right. and the, of it. And the variety that you need oh, in the retail. flavors, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the product comes in, we have to lay it out. We have to go through that That's QC process. That's funny you said that, bro. That's crazy. Like, like, like you, you, you put it in a funny perspective for me right there. Yeah, because it's different. Yeah. It's like a different, um, it's a different product, right? I mean, it's still weed, but 
it is a CPG as the what you said the chats call it like the, the chats call it a CPG right it's a it's a consumer packaged good at the end of the day for and them it's good yeah and for them that's all they see it for as them unfortunately is, for the most cheap, part and they're going to sell it uh, yo t- talk a talk a talk a little bit about having like um I, I say, like, the communication with these uh, chads, like, you kind of know how to turn it on and turn it off, like, because, trust me, you, you got to know, and it's the only way shit gets done, you know, is you can't just be all negative and go against them all the time, and I like your perspective, even if you got to be in that room and do the charity work and fuck it, I'm in front of the game, even though it might come with the cost of having to spend and learn, but... That's the best way to learn, going through it, working through it, not not just hearing about it or reading about it. So I respect that about you. Cause you cause, Appreciate that. Because that's important, man. No, I, for I sure. Have a, I have a question. Yeah. Do you like smoking flour or you like uh, dabbing? Because I, I seen you, you say I'm, yeah. I'm a flower all day. Flower? Yeah. I'll dab. Don't get me wrong. If, if it's in front of me and someone prepares it, I'll do it. I'm not going like, to preparing it, okay? That shit is a whole science, well, bro. You like smoking hash oils and shit or no? Yeah, look at the sun. No, I mean, the water hash is not that bad. I actually enjoy some. There's been some good water hash around in, in the market recently, but I'm, I'm mainly flour. I'm definitely consuming a lot less than I used yeah. to. Obviously, like, we used to, like, buy weed all day, and we were smoking that shit all day. Yeah, I feel like people are, like, making That's a, like, a, right now. I feel like people are making Dude, a different kind stop. of wave to, like, I dabbing. Stop. I can't Sorry. stop smoking, man. I, I can't Sorry. stop it. I buy it. I, I, I grow it. I, yeah. bro, I grow weed to smoking. Some of my boys are like, bro, you, you, you're you doing that weed shit a lot, bro. You're not really making money. I'm like, I didn't get into this to make money, nigga. <laughs> and that be blowing my niggas away. They're like, yo, you really like this shit. And I, I do, bro. The, the, plant, the plant, even growing it, you... The process, bro, it, it it reveals you to yourself, bro. That that shit, it, it'll teach you a thing or two. I love oh, for it. Sure. Did, hey, did you guys want to do that challenge, the dab up challenge? Hell yeah, uh, we want to do the dab up challenge. Up. But we, we we just gotta prepare. You know how to work. I don't. Not on. That's what I'm saying. Hey, this well, is, come on, bring new, it over hey, me, is, man. That, this is new to the show. They say they bring it, a puff co on. Dabs right there. It's over there. Um, if 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 you could if you could grab the puff co for us, DJ, real quick. Shit, I, 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 I never do, I've never done the dab up challenge. I, I, I'll do it with you. I, I, don't I don't know how to work it. I'm letting y'all know right now. Oh, you don't know how to work the puffco? Ernesto oh, does. I'm not. Shit. Ernesto knows Let it. Let me see. Let me see what I can do with this thing. I see my boy do it all the time. I all think right, it's absolutely. like a double click. I think it's something like that. Exactly. It's charged. Do they? Hey, so people in this lounge, like, if they don't have like a puffco to smoke out of, like, yeah, do you guys provide them? Yeah, we got for them. We'll clean it out. We got all the. Oh, that's what's up. See, that's what's up, guys. We got a butt We got a. And you guys are and you guys are working on the concentrates right here too, or you guys have concentrates uh, to grab? Yeah, there's there's definitely concentrates to grab. We have a we have a full menu of uh, of uh, high end concentrates here, and and we have an economical stuff as well. Like the the spectrum on the concentrates, there's a big spectrum of uh, price price point. Yeah. What you think about that uh hey, yo. season tournament? Hey, I ain't about to fuck this up. <laughs> hey, what happened? What happened? I got, this is a whole science project, bro. Hey, DJ, uh, see if anybody know how to uh, get the dab ready for us. Let me see. Bro, this is a whole project. Nigga. Let me see. Like, it got a rubber and a, and a thing. Uh, uh, and a, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's you know how to use this? I don't know. I'm going to figure. Ask, uh, let's ask Chris if he could get us the dab going. Fine. Oh, you need a little... um. Dabber thing. Everything's right here, though. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Give it to me. Oh, you you know how to work it, though, right? I'm going to try. All right, bet. Well, yeah. I, that's what I said. I said, I'm going to nah. try, and then I looked at this nah, shot. Like, you let can't. me not break this toy. You need something to screw yeah. it on, this nail right here. Let's see. Let's Hopefully, we're in the game. Let's see. Honestly, I don't even what know up, how to Chris? use this. Hey, hey, bro. Bro. Make, make this work hey, yo, for hey, us. How, hey, how do we use this puff coat, you man? Uh, I don't even know. Oh, yeah. This this the one that we have? Yeah. Our atomizer's broken. Is there an atomizer on the shelf? Hell yeah. Yo, if now we could do it with a bong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We could do the bong challenge. Yeah. Yo. Oh, hell no. Okay. All right, fine. We'll figure that out. Something I wanted to ask you, bro. We talked No dab up today. <laughs> now, we'll do, we'll do a bong. Hey, but now the dab up is new, so don't, you know, don't. We're working on the dab up. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's fun, though. But if we don't have a dab, we can do it with a bong. It's 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 a good, it's a challenge where we ask you two different yeah, questions. They're gonna, they're gonna get one of the bonks. Yeah, oh, yeah, easy. Throw some oh. water in that thing. Let's get it popping. So, while oh. we get while we get the bong ready, I want to ask you about the shops you have in LA, bro. Mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about Coachella. I'm sure we'll go a little more into it, but yeah. now we learned a little bit about Coachella. Talk talk about a little bit about the La Brea. 
Um, and the two other spots you have in uh, He got Los the Angeles. La Brea, the Inglewood, yeah. and the last one is, I have it right here, my bad, Los Angeles. Yes, downtown so we, LA. we have uh, three stores in the city of LA. They're kind of uh, spread out across mid-city, uh, Lamar Park, South LA area. Um, so it's spread out through... We have kind of a little triangle going. Mm -hmm. I seen that, yeah. yo, because yeah. uh, um, with DJ, uh, we went over there. We shot the three different locations. They're awesome, bro, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. So some of them we've had for one of the locations has been there for 10 years. So they're all going through. Which one was the first one? Which um, so we have been at dozens of locations because mm. okay. before um, keeping a lease with the DEA, yeah. uh, sending you these just had to move it around. We had to constantly move, and then the zonings kind of changed. But from these three locations, uh, the one in Inglewood has been there. It's going on 10 years. No way. Uh, we've been there for 10 years. Shout out Inglewood, man. Shout out Inglewood. That's yeah. when uh, Prop D came into place, which was the medical initiative that legalized medical. That's right. Um, and it forced all the shops in L.A. to be cultivators. That's mm. crazy. You had to grow your own. Oh, and everybody's like, okay, we've been doing that. <laughs> Don't trip. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> they had to go so bigger. We had to switch our location. The zoning was very different back then. You had to be 1,000 feet away from different certain sensitive uses, which is now 700 and 600 in Damn. some cases. So that was our first location from these current locations we've had. And then the one on by Lamarck Park, the Los Angeles location, um, we were literally up the street. And when the rules came into place that um, you could be within 600 feet from sensitive uses, we found something better with more higher traffic off of Obama and bigger so that we can actually grow, cultivate a lot bigger. Mm. So that, that's kind of our second location. And then La Brea is our newest location. Uh, we were lucky enough to uh, be blessed with an opportunity to be on a major intersection. Huge. Yeah, that's huge. Fort La Brea. Campus. Um, and... That is uh, the intersection that worked. We have a really good relationship with the landlord. It's a family-owned real estate. People have been trying to develop it for years, and luckily the family likes to support small business, and wow. um, they you know, want to continue doing business that. with us. The insurance guy next to me has been there for 20 years. Like, insurance place doesn't survive on La Brea, like the rents. Nah. But this guy is, like, really human about the way he manages his properties. So... It's a great location. Uh, we get a lot of uh, swing, uh, touristy kind of swings in the pattern. Like we'll have a weekend. Like I think it was All Star Weekend. We had like 130 new customers in Damn. like two days, and we looked at all the IDs. We had 26 different IDs and passports, different Damn. states and wow. countries. This was All Star Weekend. All Star Weekend, bro. That's crazy. Damn. Brings in the crowd. Brings so in the crowd. It's got those nice weekends, but it's also got its local. Uh, like, it's, it's your quick, let me get a joint spot. Like, we'll have hundreds of people walk in on a weekend to buy a joint. That's fire. Yo, I have a question, bro. Whose idea was it to call it L.A. Cannabis? Ooh, I can't take the credit for that. But we've always been L.A., right? Like, that just it just fit us so well. Like, we've been here in L.A. since inception. Yeah. And one of my partners, um, who's our COO now, and... Uh, she had a list of names and the first one. So we, we, I'm like, what? That's it. We look at the GoDaddy. It was for sale, bro. Oh, <laughs> bro, press that buy button, bro. I think we bought it. I'll, I think I bought it for like two or $3,000 right on the spot. He said, press that buy button, bro. <laughs> yeah, before somebody buy that shit, it's genius. Yeah, That's crazy. It's genius. As soon as we saw it, it all kind of came together and... Um, it's been a nice, uh, nice ride ever since, you know, I, I think, uh, legalization in 18, we were ready to like brand ourselves, uh, always before we would always be in the hiding, all the entities separate, everything was separate. Right. Now yeah. it's like, everyone knows it's us. They know who we are, our customers. They knew before, but now they're like, no, no. They know, no. Exactly. No. And it lets, it, it gives you the courage big to in back, the LA community. Like back, back you guys up and, and, and applaud you guys because, bro, you guys have been serving the community. Like, to a lot of people might just think about it like, oh, it's a weed shot. But, bro, when you understand the plant, bro, you, you guys are doctors, bro. And, and shout out to, you, uh, like, f for you guys healing the city, bro, for real. Like, and, and, and the, in, in 
like to other people, like I'm. I'm He's connect- helping the city out for sure, bro. And and the part of the city, in my opinion, that doesn't like, I want to say matters, but that needs it the most, nigga. You in the hood, bro. No, and I like Yo. what you said earlier too, like, off real. camera. But we're gonna bring it to light. Is what you said is when you guys hire workers, you guys hire local people from the community, yeah. and that's dope, bro. Cause that brings you know action to people wanting to shop with you, you know. Yeah. Because a lot of people in the local, they're like, yeah, that's shot. But if you have people that actually yeah, yeah, around yeah. it and surround it. Oh, no. Nah, dude, go, go, go. No, he's talking that shit. Just to <laughs> capitalize on what he's saying, that guy right there on the TV that we were interviewing, uh-huh. his family member worked for one of you guys. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because we were smoking the weed. He's like, oh, yeah, I actually got family member there. And we're like, oh, that's shit. That's crazy. No. Yeah, yeah, no, we hire local for real. So, yeah, yeah, that's no, crazy. So just to back up for real, like, he just you just didn't answer that question here to try to, like, Answer yeah. the question, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, that's crazy. So it's, it's, it's important for us to the, the team represents you, right? As a business owner, you're not going to be able to be in front of every customer. Um, you want to leave um, the, that impression on your team. You want to treat your team how you, you want your team to treat your customers, right? Yeah. Mm. So that's how we kind of look at it. Obviously, business is business, and we got to follow rules, and we have certain standards that we hold everything to. But I think that makes everyone feel like they're a part of something better, mm. right? So it's like, if we're holding everyone accountable, then it doesn't feel like, oh, you're getting picked on, right? It's no, like, right. we're it's holding everybody, everyone everybody from the top to the bottom. Um, so and it's definitely some of the key uh, morals and things we kind of like run our company by. And and again, that starts that starts at the top from you. And where do you get these morals from? Like, does that come that just... I, th- I think it has to be natural. Obviously, your family, your surroundings, my partners, I, I grew up with everybody, right? And we all kind of grew up together. And it was like, um, I, I think that that my upbringing and, you know, it's, it's just you as a person. I got friends that we grew up together. I got cousins we grew up together. We have different mindsets right now, right? So it's, it's really, a, you're, a, you're a byproduct of your environment. Mm. And... W- like I said, I, I feel like I got to really know the community because I actually served the community myself mm. personally. So I grew up and um, the people that you're around end up uh, affecting who you are, right? Mm. So I was, we're talking 16 years. I'm not that old. You know, I was <laughs> fuck when I first started. I was only 21. I was a kid and I was learning myself. And shout out to that. 21, still stayed with it, didn't give up. And look at you now, bro. Wow. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. This challenge we about to do, how are we going to do this? So, let me let, 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 let me teach you the ropes, baby. Yeah. No, no, I got this part. Down. I'm saying, how are we going to smoke it? We got it packed up. Let's oh, get it. Yeah, the bong is packed up. Yeah, it's I, ready to go. You, 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 let's do it, Ernesto. Oh, bro. Oh, no. Matter of fact, bro. Ernesto, put some wax in it, too. Oh, you bad. Oh, shout out to our producer, DJ. Let him know. Yeah, He's always put try- some wax in bro, it, too. Shout out to DJ. Always making everything better, my nigga. Everything better. If you think you got a great idea, just go call DJ, and you're going to be humbled. You're going to be like, nigga, why the fuck did I think of that? Yo, so while I, while I put the wax on the bowl, ooh, that's a good segment right there. Uh, I'm going to ask I'm going to run these ask down. So this goes, he's going to ask spice you, up, I'm going to spice up a little of these questions up, though. We'll, he's going to ask you two yeah. things. If you can't choose oh. between yeah, you, one or the oh, other, you, uh, you take a hit. Okay. All right, so look, we're going to go. So it's a, this is the dab up challenge. This is my first, this is my first time doing the dab up challenge, so. Let's go. And, and shout out to that. Let's, let, let, uh, everybody, let's get a clap for the, for, for the challenge. We're going to start the challenge because after this, shit gets real. All right, here we go. So do I run it down quick? Is just a rundown or actually let them Each answer? one, one okay. at a time. Take, so your, this, take your time with it. So here's woods or papers? Uh, papers. Papers, cool. Adidas or Nike? Nike, let's go. I like that. Right off the bat, Nike, quick. Uh, Trump or Biden? Ooh. Give me that bong, man. <laughs> he said, give me that bong. <laughs> Trump or Biden. That was a good one, huh? He's like, damn. It's death. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So we keep it. We let him take the another. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll shit. Let... I got to pay. I got to pay up. Yep. Pay up. Yo, shout out to this bong. This is a beautiful bong right here, brother. Let's do it. That's f- he's about to take a bomb. This down. He's like, Ugh, give me the bomb. That's what he said. Trump, Biden, give me the bomb. 
Oh, lift it too early? Oh, yeah. All right, dude. I said, I said, I said papers, bro. I said papers. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that was a good hit. All right. Who Yo, hit that? Shit, right? That was a fire ass. Who bomb. hit it? That's a good ass bong. Yeah. So he hit it, but I, I, I come on, I had to he clean it up, up for him, bro. All right, all right. Boy. No homo, gotta clean it up, so, bro. So, I had to so, tag me in real so quick. There, so there goes the dabble. So we got streets or corporate. They, they all know me as corporate, bro. They know me <laughs> as corporate. <laughs> All right, a uh, little designer question right here. Louis or Gucci? Louis or Gucci? Fuck. I'll go Gucci. You go Gucci? <laughs> Louis Gucci, okay. You go Gucci. Tupac or Biggie? Ooh. Tupac, baby. Come on, West Side. West Coast real quick. All right, this is another one right here. LeBron or Kobe? Mamba time. Okay, that's easy. We got five guys or in and out in and out Okay. And they got mouth or south, but we can't ask these questions. So this is out because he has a wife and kids. Thank you. And all that. We, that shit. we ain't doing that shit here. Shout out family. So, Shout out family. So chocolate or vanilla? Oh, man. Uh, vanilla. Vanilla? Okay, cool. If you, <laughs> I'm like, uh, this I la like, hey, this last one, I don't know how to say this one, but this is I the like last one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do this one, Nesto. Do the last one for me. Nesto got me. He's, I like white chocolate. Nigga, I, I can't. That's a dab. <laughs> I, I can't even read. I, I, hologram or monogram? What that mean, bro? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm monogamous, bro. <laughs> so there you have it. That was the dab nice up challenge. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm what he is, gang. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Whatever he said over there. I'm I, on, I'm I'll have Armin. what he's having, bro. I'm on Armin's side. I got family and kids, man. I can't. Yeah, be, bro. Be gonna I'm trying to go home, set DJ. Me up. You're gonna set me up out here. <laughs> DJ wants to go live with him after. So this that shit. was the dab up challenge, and if anything, um, we're just we want to talk about any big plans for you know the Coachella store, or even the stores out in LA, or what do you got works in the future? We know we got this lounge here. Yeah. What's more to come besides the, you know, like the extracts and for sure. Well, 2024, we're definitely uh, focusing on um, optimizing and increasing production. So we want to be able to grow more uh, strains. Um, we were growing. We have about 20 plus in the library. We have the classics. I got Blue Dream. I got Sour Diesel. I got I got old. I like stuff that. That's the old sitting there. Yeah. Um, the problem is, bro. I got old to. heads that really love that Blue Dream, nigga. Yeah, that haze. They need that, that haze. Right? And how do we make it work and the consistency and keeping uh, the genetics healthy? Uh, another question too. Mm. Do you guys just plan on staying like, you know, in the states or ever even going like, you yeah, know? Yeah, I, th I think right now my focus is a single state, just given the fact that this is the makeup of uh, cannabis. Yeah. And I feel like every time I've looked into other states, um, when you dive deeper, the market is just such more regulation. Uh, so and, bigger here. Yeah, it's definitely uh, this is some, one of the most regulated markets out there for sure. Um, yeah, but um, the market is so big here, and I feel like the real brands are going to be made here. Yeah. So even if your vision is bigger, um, I think you gotta be really hit it out of the park out here before you even think about going to the next. State right. or even doing expanding. And you know what they say, if L.A. like you, the world go love you. Oh, yeah. Yep. Shit, I already liked it. You know, and this isn't Coachella. You would, it's like how he said, you would think you in West Hollywood when you walk in here. Shit. <laughs> nah, 100%. Nah, nah, he didn't, I don't think he said you. They don't miss, bro. They don't miss right here. This weed, we're, I'm smoking on this lemon cherry. This is actually a good lemon cherry. Oh, yeah. That lemon cherry is fire. Yeah. What flavors okay, I, do you guys I, provide out here as far as your brand and what brands do you guys have? In the store. Yeah. Um, so we have a full array of brands. Obviously, the, the, there are the top brands that we carry um, as far as uh, CBX's go. We have the Raw Garden. We have Stizzy. We have the Jeters. Um, Talk a have, little bit about that collaboration with Wiz Khalifa and that KK. We have the Khalifa Kush. Um, so, yeah, all our L.A. stores carry the Khalifa Kush. We have a really good partnership with them. He did a big shout-out for us. They do a lot of drops with us. Okay. Um, they do a lot of BOGOs with us, which they don't do too many BOGOs, but they really value the relationship. So They fuck with y'all. We're always doing Khalifa Kush um, promos. And, really, when I put up – promotional product on my platform um, you thing. know we have a big database a text message database of customers that have opted in to our deals page um, I think we're well over 40,000 subscribers so um, wow. that message cost money yeah, so when I, I, put, when I put brands on those messages yeah. it's a partnership right there has to be a give 
and a take um because we do we spend thousands of dollars to send those messages out yeah so every message has a dollar but not just that to accumulate that address book it takes it takes hey i'm seeing uh, customers just walk me? in and uh, i'll just years, cheese and it and cheese and it and they just happy they just and genuinely just happy compliant right with that with that database because there are uh telecommunication rules about texting people but texting is the most intimate uh way right email is kind of like email is like I don't know, they got a new statistic, like 98% of that shit gets deleted, right? So e- Facts, email, no. email page is very important to have. But the text message is mm-hmm. a direct mm-hmm. connection uh, with the customer, and they have opted in. That means they have chosen Ooh. for you to continue to blow them up. Yes, right? yes. Like, okay. At any you moment, you could up. press a, a zero to, to stop, right? Anytime. Yeah. That button always has to be available. Opt out. That's fire. I Shout like, out to I the like chick that. next door again, man. This shit's refreshing. I love ah. it. Yo, oh, yo, that's a good name. I thought that's, it was a, that, drink. That's, that's also a good movie, bro. The girl next door. The yeah. Ch- the chick next door. <laughs> the chick next the, the door. The the girl girl are a couple. <laughs> that's fire. <laughs> the, so, the, the so you guys have a location out in Glendale, you said, and then you got out here. Yeah, there's too. one out in Glendale. There's Y'all gotta here. go try this. It's that raspberry We're expanding. So Shit. there's gonna be other locations coming. Damn. Hell yeah, bro. The food is the food is fire. Yeah, I gotta try a sandwich before we out of here. I'm yo, definitely gonna do that. Whoa. Bro, right before we were talking about the the the, the drink, what, what what were we just different thinking? strains that yeah. we're growing? Oh, um, and that KK relationship that was Khalifa. Yes, so Khalifa, they they're a great partner of ours. So we definitely, it's one of the few brands that could hold their price and um, has a following. And I think what they did great was um, the collaboration with the cultivation is more solid. Mm. Yeah. Where I feel like Little Wayne messed up with his collaboration. Mm. Um, and uh, 2 chains messed up with his collaboration. And those are big names in cannabis and hip-hop yeah. um, that didn't quite connect the cannabis side of it. Yeah. Mm. Um, and even Snoop Dogg, he's done some stuff in other states that have failed. And here they did a little something. They're doing the death row now, so they're trying again. Mm-hmm. But, like, Khalifa, he sells millions yeah. in cannabis where I don't think a lot of the other... Artists are hitting those numbers, so they're like, this shit's not even worth it. No, yeah, the Khalifa could right. be hitting. I tried that with Ludi, and that shit was... But I, I talk... It's because the approach, you feel me? The way Lil Wayne, the way the 2 chains came into it, they didn't come into it like what's Khalifa They, they probably did. came into, like, collecting a check more. Exactly. Right. West then, Khalifa, then West, care. Wes Khalifa came into it the way you now are starting to see the, the brands, like maybe like Chris Brown's brand. That are doing it right. Shout out to Shaggy because they're it's, it, they're coming for the culture. They're coming for the pulse. Yeah. You know. And when you understand that and you're of it, is when it comes off organically. And the beaut- the reason I don't think you've had that issue is because you've been about about this and you don't mind walking into the legal rooms and saying, yeah, you know what, I I fuck with this weed shit. And yeah. and you haven't you haven't mind do- doing that since you were 21. Yeah. That's sick, bro. I appreciate that. I, Thank you. When like, you uh. Like, when you look at it and you look at the whole perspective of it, it definitely um, we went from the hiding to like now I openly conversate about the industry I'm in, um, even with like f- even family, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. so family members. Now it's like everywhere I go, I don't have to be like, oh, I'm in like investing or real estate <laughs> or some shit. Like no, I'm in cannabis. This yeah. is what we do. Um, this is what we're about. Everyone's gonna have their. Uh, perception regardless. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I'm just glad that I'm comfortable enough to be open about it and uh, I embrace it. Again, on that Batman shit. Ah. <laughs> yeah, now that's that mobile now. You're right, bro. No, yeah. Wait, doing everything for the weed community. Damn, yeah, for sure. For real, that's for, for sure. That's well, gangster. Hey, you don't, want, you don't want to say anything on the show, man? Or are you good? Want to come on here? Ah. He, he was talking about Puerto Vallarta, and I, you, if we go out there, you better be on. Yeah, no, we've we've we love Vallarta, so it's one of my uh, second. It's probably my second favorite city outside of LA. Yeah, like it. It's a real city, you know. Yeah, I feel I've you. Been in different parts of Mexico. Would you would you uh, ever plan like say move like when you when it's said all and done like retiring out there? Oh yeah, it's definitely a beautiful place to be. It's a it's a it's a jungle, and you got the beach. And yeah. what I liked about the city, it's like Mexico's Mexico. Yes, uh, it's, it's a touristy vibe, but a lot of the locals they all live right there. Yeah. Right. When you go to like Cabo, 
They all the get... locals live like an hour away. Yeah. And nobody lives in Cogbo, bro. Right, it's like, right, 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 right. We're not living in Cogbo. Yeah, that's too, right. that's too much for them, if anything. It's too expensive, right? Yeah. I can relate to that because I've always worked in Hollywood, but I lived in the Valley. Right. Or I or, or, or lived in Santa Clarita. But imagine you, you like Clarita. lived where you worked, so and the ocean is accessible to everybody. Um, on some Hawaii shit. Yeah, and it's accessible to everybody, and I feel like the quality of life is better for yeah. the locals, mm. and that's why you're just going to get better hospitality, mm. and um, I just feel more <coughs> comfortable just being out and about in, in Vallarta than I did in, like, Cabo Andy, or yeah. TJ or any of the other cities. I feel with you. I, I mean, shit, I could just imagine. That's all I was asking. Would you, If you like it so much, you would be able to retire there. It. You yeah, know what I, I mean? I love that city. Yeah, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, I got to go out there. Hey, to we got to film a show out there for LA sure. I'm going to take that. Hey, we got to film a show out there. Bro. We'll take our families and everything. Shit. Do it. <laughs> Yo, bro. We could do a 48 hours. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> I call it that like, quick turnaround, that turnaround. Is it smoking 48 hours? Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, I got a question for, you know, a lot of people out there t uh, with a traditional brand because a lot, especially right now, the way genetics are like spreading, it's not like before where people used to hide genetics and hold them hostage. Now with the culture and people even knowing how to grow, a lot more people know how to grow is more accessible. So my question is, what are some like five things that you would recommend to anybody trying to succeed in this game? Like do's and don'ts like at least five things you tell you would tell people look bro if you want to be in this game you don't do this you don't do this yeah. give me five of those and then give me five that you would do and the only reason is because this podcast we besides being entertaining besides letting people know what's smoking we really like to be educational man and i don't want this opportunity being with a ceo like you just to go to waste you know so any gems that we could squeeze out of you no homo mm -hmm. I'm I'm, da I'm, I'm 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 down the I'm down the pool, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. no homo. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, there's definitely uh, a few things that I would say, advice. Yeah. Uh, you know, in in today's like Uber economy or however they call it, and just all these uh, mentors or people selling courses online, um, <laughs> they're always talking about it's not about the product, it's the marketing, it's the marketing. In cannabis, is the opposite, right? It it is about the product. So I think to be successful, um, you have to nail down the supply chain. Yeah. So people want to come in with a brand. Yes, there are some partnerships with existing growers that could work, some examples of it working. Yeah. But for the most part, if you're going to come in and white label and try to just focus on the branding, you're going to have a hard time connecting with the cannabis consumer, mm. right? Uh, me being a, on both sides where we do production and we deal with the consumer, um, we have a better insight on the consumer. So yeah. that, I'm telling you, one, focus on the product, man. <laughs> yeah, you so, got to focus on what they smoke in, right. man. Most yeah. of these brands, they just, like so, you said, they just like, bag that one up, bag this one. Uh, like, and, and, and thank you for that, Jen, because pretend I'm in a house with three of my homies, and one of them is like, nah, bro, I'm about to put 100000 into buying a bunch of packs. And then one of my other homies, no, bro, I'm going to put 100000 into buying better quality. Or there's another guy, I'm going to go up to the farm and do this. What you said right now is very, it, to anybody who just went over the head, but thank you, bro, because you said it. You're on both sides, yeah. and focus on the product. Yeah, if you focus on the product, that's one thing, and I think um, the space that there's still margins is in production and cultivation. Right now, cultivators are uh, accordion stretch, or however we want to call Like Some people are just going to the next level while everyone else is staying behind right exactly the, the bar is being raised very hard so the sooner you're like i think the ip <laughs> and all that research and development on the yo the chicken spot is literally next door the chick next door come through come on man come on man Shit, I don't know. Let me see. Bro, bro. get the fries, bro. It's the hottest thing, bro. They got this, these new fries, bro. I, I forget the name of them, bro. Yo, what the name of the fries? Steve's fries. Yo, Steve's fries, Steve bro. Fries. Right, we, 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 we get two of them. Yo, bro, I want the Steve fries and whatever else you recommend. I definitely recommend our wild berry lemonade, bro. Woo! Cheers to that. Yo, try it. Is it good or not? Fire. Fire, Fire. Yo, I told you these Steve's fries was fire, bro. Look at the chicken mac and cheese on the bro, french fries. Bro, this chicken, 
I don't know, this shit's not like no regular chicken nugget. It's some fire ass chicken. I'm like GMO bullshit. No, bro, if you could taste the quality chicken for real, bro. Dang. This tastes delicious. The chicken nuggets are actually just fire all right, my boy. Yo, and the ambiance here, bro, even though we're in Coachella Valley, I still feel like we're in the hood. Straight up, huh? Mm-hmm. It feels good. So, by, damn, bro, what, Mac? You didn't, you didn't know how mac and cheese? Wow. i trying to tell you, bro. Quality wow. chicken, this shit is really good. Old side is gonna have high value later if you can build something consistent. Um, so I think definitely focusing on that. Um, obviously having the right team. Um, I think this industry, most startups need a lot, a few people, a handful of people that are like living and breathing the company for a yeah. startup to happen, right? Yeah. Um, and in cannabis, you, you need that as well. Like you, you need, a couple of hands that you can't do this on your own. This shit takes an army. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. It, from, it does. From, from it does. It's a and team to, effort. From growing it and to selling it. It's for you to come into this space. If you don't have the deep pockets, you're not going to be able to hire everybody. So if it's like three, four friends that want to start a brand or start get into the space, they need the capital. There has to be some capital. <coughs> this industry is capital hungry. If, 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 if we're talking about cap, how much uh, capital are we talking to just start – even just to start, we're not even talking about to even get it on the shelf right. or even to get it on the shelf. How does, a, like, say anybody's watching, you know, right. they probably want me to ask this right, question. Right, right. So, the, so there's different, different price points, entry points. Um, right now, it's actually, uh, given the economic downturn and how I was talking about the separation happening, yeah. there is a lot of distressed assets available. Okay. Um, things that actually, like, even are appealing to us to look at. Hey, there's someone that lost their ass on this place. Mm. Um, you can pick it up for a lot less. Um, but building from scratch is very expensive. So, um, you know, cultivation costs anywhere from 300 to $500 a square foot to build. Mm -hmm. I want to say I, I, there could be 10 people that built at 10 different costs. That's where I think some of these new standard facilities cost to build. So if you're building a 10,000 square foot facility, uh, bank on like $3 million, right? Yeah. To build something, there's like carrying cost. Some people are going bigger, right? There's bigger facilities. Yes. Some people are able to build uh, cheaper. I've seen facilities built at like 75, 80 bucks a foot. Yeah. But three years later, it doesn't work it's out. It's falling apart, yeah. you know? Um, there's problems. So you could take some shortcuts and get in cheaper on production side. But it's just how long do you want to be in the game right. and actually do and things right? Retail um, is probably the easiest or the not the easiest but the cheapest entry point mm. you can build a small 1500 square foot shop for like two hundred thousand dollars hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars but it's also the more difficult license to get because mm. it's out in the face of people and the yeah. community and the local neighborhoods and the cities have restrictions right so there's uh there's it's a lot limited of licenses in some cities there's a lot of cities. guidelines to meet Right, so some cities it's either limited licenses, which is hard to get. So there's either like this city is a limited license. There's only five licenses issued. What? So you guys got one just of them. Just for Coachella. Just the city of Coachella. So you got one, right? So we have one of the just one of the Coachella. five. That's so, but the neighboring city right over Cathedral City has no limit. So what? there's two in one shopping plaza. Okay. What? And they have no distance restrictions, so it's super flooded there. But you go to Indio, which is a city three times bigger than this, and they just want to do three. Damn. So three times bigger, but they're doing three less. Yeah. yeah. So that license is like way more prized. Cause that, at the end of the day, it's like only you three are selling. Right. So so. Wow. The, the limited, it's limited market licensing, um, are things you have to strategically look at if you yeah. are going into a market that's it's it's like uh, one is easy to get in, but it's saturated. One is harder to get in, but, but it's less saturated. Yeah. But it's like getting that ticket. There's a higher value, like yeah. you might end up paying a million dollars just for the license in some of yeah. these limited cities, right? Yeah, so you gotta have big pockets. In other words, so yeah. good have weed, big pockets. good weed, good team, good facility. Let's go four. Oh, he wants more. <laughs> <laughs> I want it all, man. You said I need to hear he it all. Oh, I'm um, learning. That's Definitely, some, that's some uh, knowledge right there. It, it, it's a basic uh, thing in. Any business as well, uh, definitely understanding the accounting side of 
things because this is a highly taxed industry. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you could lose your ass real quick. Yeah. Um, if you don't know your taxes right, if you're not charging the customer correctly, if you don't understand the federal tax. Uh, and not only that, keeping them that, happy. You got to keep the customer happy as well. The customer's not happy paying taxes. Let me tell you that yeah, right Yeah, exactly. Okay. Facts. They're not happy paying taxes. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, fact that you actually got somebody that's like, all right, fuck, fuck it. cheaper weed. I'm going to actually put money yeah. on the table and then let the government take 40%. That's crazy, huh? Um, right. So that's that side <laughs> of it. So um, definitely. That's that Shohei Otani contract. Any, some minor education on accounting because, um, you know, uh, people from the traditional market, actually, a lot of people know accounting pretty well, but they'll know, like, the basic cash flow statement. Yeah. Uh, accounting has three legs. Right. Uh, there's additional legs in accounting. Once you start diving into uh, business side of it and the numbers get bigger, it's hard to operate off of just the cash flow. Mm. You have to make predictions, mm. yeah. forecast and budget. And, and you got to think that you might make this much and you might not. Yes. And if it's just off of cash flow, um, your ARs might be going up. Your accounts receivables might be going up. Yeah. Cash flow is going down or vice versa. Your payables is going up. You think you made money. But you're racking up payables. Yeah. So it's these legs. It's not adding up. It's like in school when it's accounting class, you're just like, oh, shoot me in the head. Yeah. But when you get up in business, it's like accounting. Um, you don't have to be an accounting expert, but you got to know what time it is. You got to know what's coming in and what's coming out. It's what's coming in, what's coming out, what's what we're spending. owed mm, and, to yeah. us and what's owed to other people. Yeah. That's the third leg. And then how do we, where do we get our capital? Ah. So it's yeah. the additional legs versus like if you're just like. Yeah, dollar. Boxes. <laughs> okay, you know how many boxes you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How much cash you got. This is uh, different. This is okay, different. You know what you spent at the club last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? You know what that is? You, that's that's the, hilarious. You know what that, you, you know what that <laughs> this leg. This is real money. You know what that leg in the street would be? F- the front. Yeah. That's the front yeah, tab. That's, that's your AR. That, 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 that AR is it's the front tab. How good are you keeping that front tab? And where does everyone lose their ass? On that tab. <laughs> facts. <laughs> oh, God. Facts. No, facts. They, That's the one. They gambled it this off. This phone number's been disconnected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. The number you're trying to reach right now. <laughs> yeah. No. Now I know what you, you mean. You know, hey, you know you hate that one. When yeah, you hear that, you're like, right. what? Right. So that's four. I got one more for you. And then um, definitely uh, the legal side, right? The so five. just accounting. Number four, and then having the right attorneys or consultants. Um, you know, I, I, I've actually <coughs> turned into a serial entrepreneur, and I've, like, invested in restaurants. I've invested a little bit in real estate. Mm. I've invested in alcohol as well. And I got to uh, learn alcohol a little bit, and I actually saw a lot of, uh, a lot of similarities. It's a weed. But, like, the thing is, when you look at the applications, because I'm like, all right, now I'm buying this alcohol business. i got to transfer the license. So the broker that was doing the deal was like, oh, this is the consultant I used. And I'm like, okay, dope. I'm thinking they're about to be like, yo, 50 racks for this transfer. Because that's yeah. cannabis, anything. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, it's $2,500. We'll fill all that paperwork out for you. And I'm like, wait a minute. This paperwork looks a lot familiar to what I fill out, and I pay like 10 times that shit to get filled out. Nice. So there's more experts. So the price of like the consultants and the attorneys and the people that do this shit is down damn right so i'm like oh wait a minute so definitely it's happening in the industry as well people are doing this leg work or this uh compliance work a lot cheaper now mm. but having the right people that uh, understand, understand that, paperwork. that paperwork but then you also wanting to understand too at least the process yeah no of course kind of like how you said before I, I i don't need to be there watering the plant but nigga i know how to yeah i know what stage it needs to be where at. it needs to be i, at, I understand it understand the process right but your brain is working so fast that you're like nigga i can't be here if watering right. the plant bro right. I, i'm that's stronger true. leading and that's and, and, Talk a little bit about that, because I know a lot of people are caught up in that right now. Bro. You're always going to get caught up in that, and you have to uh, pivot and, 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 and identify cost- it and stop doing it, right? Mm. I'll catch myself wanting to like, take care of a task. Today. Bro. And other times, I'm like, okay, the best times when I do the best is when I sit back and I figure out a way for someone else to get this done for yes. me. Um, and game plan something else right, and have and time plan, to go plan, pick up another bag or a check or plan this. Plan out some of that stuff because, like, I'll Man. catch myself wanting to, like, 
do some do more. Do a KPI report myself, and instead of like really just writing up a process and having somebody, somebody at like do twenty five, thirty dollars an hour, not. You want someone that knows what they're doing no in front facts. of a computer, but like knowing the right person to give the right tasks to, yeah. um, and buy up my my time so that I, my job, as a to 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 continue your business to grow, like I have to work on today, I have to work on stuff for, for like six, eighteen months, twelve yeah. months. You got to be so ahead of the curve. You have to if you know. Obviously, right now. The industry is going through a lot of turbulence, so everyone's preserving cash. Mm -hmm. So there's no big moves happening, but I've been looking at deals still. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Somebody just hit me about a deal in West Hollywood. Yeah. Where I'm like, I'll look at it where I got no fucking money for that right now, bro. But, yeah. like, you know, but I'm going to look at it, right. and I'm going to, like, entertain it. Because something could because happen. it could happen, right? Yeah. And, um, that time you put in, it's like, hey, I'm putting in time on this. There's no ROI. ROI might come back later. It might not. But ROI is big. You got to do it, right? If you got to try, yeah. If you want to go, uh, something else might happen from that contact. Obviously, that's a person that's created something, that's involved in something, like has. Screw so something I, up. I, I always, uh, even like sometimes I'll get DMs on Instagram and stuff. People are like trying to pitch me something. I'll give it like a little bit. You know, if, if it seems interesting, I'll hear it out. If you sound stupid, I'm just gonna be like, oh, what idea? What, what what ideas have been pitched? Yeah, if so you if if you I've had people pitch me stuff for on IG, they'll message me like, hey, I just saw you on Instagram or something or like, cause I'm I always comment. Yeah, it's my engagement way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'll go on relevant stuff and I'll comment because I feel like that I connect throws you better. In the mix of everything. Well, people are like, oh shit, they like that comment. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll comment something and they'll be like, oh, that makes sense or it's relevant. Right. Um, and people will start following you. I'll comment on, like, cannabis pages and stuff a lot. Yeah. yeah. Throw my two cents in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah let them matters. know. It matters, bro. Let them know what you think real you. quick. I think that's what's going to constantly keep building us better and better. And if anybody's to throw a comment, shit, let it be you, bro. You're Again, you're the Batman. Yeah. You said Batman. <laughs> I just need that Batmobile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said Batman. Hey, for real. Coming out of the cave, he's going to come out of Coachella Valley. Yeah, that's the vibe, bro. Batman always stayed away hey. from Gotham, too, bro. He stayed away from the city. He came out. It's, when I come out here into the desert, man, it's just as soon as I hit those windmills, bro, mm. it's just peace. That's what I talked about when I was like, so bro, nice. we're going to go through the windmills. Nigga windmills. talked about it. This nigga fell asleep. He was chilling. Yeah, I nigga. saw the windmills. I was like, bro, yeah. the windmills are right there. No, I woke up right As he was waking up. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, the windmills? <laughs> <laughs> windmills. Hey, so why is it so peaceful going through that? Uh, bro, it's, it's funny you say that. It's a vibe. It is a vibe. This whole place is uh, You know what I told him? Like, peaceful, and this time of year is amazing out here. Yeah. Uh, the weather's like. Perfect. Yeah, it's not too cold. I thought it was going to be cold out here when I came out. Yeah, no, it's yeah. nice. It's nice out here. I mean, yeah, it's good. I love going to like uh, Palm Springs area or like El Paseo Street. Yeah. Just it's a vibe. Out. Even if we just grab a coffee and just hang out yeah, a little yeah. bit. It's a vibe out here for sure. It gives me an hour of like, I hey, feel like hey, I'm on hey, vacation. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like, a, hey, that's what I was about to tell you. Yeah. Like when you're out here, it's not like you get that city feel. Like, you know, oh, you. It's calm out here. Yeah, I like it. more calm. I like the vibes. I like the vibes from the team. Yeah. Everyone's like more creative, a little less stressed out. Mm. Shout out to my people in LA. I love you guys because you guys yeah. are about making that money. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that yeah. LA, hey, that LA flow got different. Mm. You know, hey, you, you need a different, uh, like, um, yeah. you need a different jacket out there to be able to survive. It's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. It's a different energy. And everyone's chill out here. I like the vibes. Everyone likes to. They got good work ethic, and uh, everyone's just chill. You know, yeah, it's just like, chill. That chill vibe. I could. I, I already know. It. Where you're just you all night like, connect. yeah, you like that? Like, yeah, yeah, that's where, fine. where you wake up and you want to go to work, you know? That, that sure. Me and him were just talking about that on the way here, bro. We're like, bro, fuck, we don't got the most money, bro, but how good does it feel to wake up and be happy, bro, to be, be yeah. doing what we're yeah. doing? We're well, striving for what we're striving for, you know? I, I always feel like the money and in my professional career, I've had a lot of success, so don't get me wrong, uh, but it's always ups and downs, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's with anybody, and it's... Anything. At any level, right? Yeah, and so anything. As long as you know that it's always going to be a swing. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, and every time you're striving for that swing to just be bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, it's like, I'm not creating, I'm not living. Yeah. Um, so I'm always looking at it like, who's, what did uh, one of my 
partner sent me something the other day. You know, Kirk Kirkoyan, he's an Armenian billionaire, passed away about seven, eight years ago. He did a lot of philanthropy work for the community, so he's well known. But he's the founder of MGM. Oh, oh shit. damn. So he's one of the OGs from Las Vegas. And this guy has literally parlayed billions of dollars his whole life to when he was almost 90 years old. He saved the city center with his own money. That's crazy. Like, they were going to go bankrupt twice. The first time, he saved them. The second time, it was Chinese investors. Yeah. Like, he put up a billion dollars of his own money at, like, 80-something, bro. We're at 80-something. I'm you're sorry. You're going to kick it? Yeah. You've already gone corporate. This is MGM. Yeah. Yeah. For you to parlay your money into this? Yeah. And he's done it twice, and he did it with MGM Studios, and he parlayed $600 million back when nobody had fucking $600 million. That's oh crazy. Or that God. Uber money, right? So, that money. to me, it was like, what a this man. dude's got... All the money. Vision. And he's still going. Uh, That's crazy, huh? Buddha, like, cry about an L. Yeah. <laughs> it's just lame, right? Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. And it's funny because once you start cry seeing. Cry about an L. You yeah. Know? People are taking mm. big L's out here. And you got to It's funny you said it. that the other day. My buddy was like, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm all in for a thousand. And I, <laughs> and I looked at him and I'm like, bro, I was like, all in for a thousand? Like, that's nothing. I was like, you should be willing to throw more. Like, what? Like, hey, but yeah. Was, hey, he probably needed that thousand. Man. Yeah, he was like, bro, this thousand. I don't know. No investing for me. It, you got to get in. But look, I always tell people, like, if you're willing to invest your last thousand in anything you believe in, would you do it? Fuck Most yeah. of these people won't. Because they're like, hell nah, dog. I got to get my yeah. beer. I got to get my. I'm like, fuck it, bro. Let's Scary take Scary money don't make no money. Yeah, yeah I'm willing to yeah, take yeah, that you risk. Gotta, you got to so. put in that risk. And we've, we risked a lot out here. Obviously, like we said, everything goes above what you project, but um, it's, it's been going good. It looked like everything going well right now. Everything's going good. We got a I good see the motion. The motion is nice. Uh, the customers. They're all happy. I'm watching. I'm yeah, walking. Yeah, yeah. Walk we're, we're, hey, we're, every we're customer. We're out here. We've only been open for uh, six months, bro. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's still a baby shop, but we're, we're, we're doing good. The customers uh, are really, but like, you guys are laying the foundation right now. I like the culture. We're getting a lot of regulars. People, this is their go-to to go smoke. We got the truckers pulling in. Yeah. Shout out to, to the truckers. Oh, man. When I seen them, because I didn't know. I, private truckers could do whatever they want. Yeah. This is their private own shit. Mm. So a lot of the truckers are like, yo, this is my shit. Like, I don't this drink. Is... I don't do shit. Facts. I'm working, and this is my shit. This is That's fine. funny you say that. So you guys get a lot of uh, truck truckers in and So out. this is the last stop before you go to Blight. Okay. Um, and and this that's is going towards Phoenix, to right? Food. And then. Nice. A the, bunch the Starbucks of around right the corner is the last Starbucks till you get to uh, Phoenix. So you yeah. fuck up. Yeah. So 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 hey. So there's a so there's a lot of people that probably been like, yeah, I'll just get it on the next stop and probably. We're fuck actually. Up. Oh, like, yeah. there is no next stop. <laughs> That's no what I'm saying. Like the people that don't know, they probably like, yeah, the next yeah, stop. Yeah. Fuck no. And then from Arizona, we're the first stop. So we got a lot of customers that come from Arizona because the selection is not as big there. Yeah. And the dispensaries are a little more expensive. Ah. So. We have a bunch of customers that, like, pull together money, get in the car. And make it over here and drive. Really? That's oh, crazy. Shit, Chicken if I was a door. teenager in Arizona, that's what I'm up to. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to get There's six. There's grown months. adults coming, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just, they're just stocking up, huh? It's Saturday, how they're buying up hey, all the edibles and the drinks. They're like, Yo, how much can they buy up to, like, the... the like the legal limit for flour in California is... Uh, eight ounces? It's... Uh, it's an ounce for recreational. Okay. Eight ounces for medical. Okay, so if they have their medical, uh, they have their medical card, I'm, they can get I, eight I'm ounces. Med I medically need this. Hey, it's interesting you said that. It's actually, you know, uh, when the pandemic uh, happened, you know, UCBA. I'm involved with a lot of the legislative stuff, and then yeah. very involved in the city as well. So I kind of knew there was gonna be a lockdown a few weeks before, like the world mm. kind of really knew. Yeah. There was talks of it. But everyone was like, lockdown, what? You're like, lockdown? Lo oh. We knew a lockdown was going to happen because the city was already preparing the process. Shout out to that. Um, and every industry made their plea to be uh, deemed essential. Yeah. And, you know, it was our medical patients. And we have the data, like. They kept the shops open, no? They yeah, all the it. shops were deemed essential. Yeah. And the, the they, data they was. Needed, they needed that yeah, shit. And it was deemed essential, so. Uh, dispensaries got to stay open during yeah, the pandemic. That was crazy, that's yeah. when it. That's when we went from like 
barely legal to essential, you know? And, like, my head, I'm just like, wow. wow. Well, we made you know, it. It's like, now. Nah, yeah, and then essential. people needed their weed, bro, because if not, they was going to go crazy at the crib. If they didn't imagine they didn't have shit. Nah, they knew. <laughs> nigga, Trump knew what he was doing. He's like, yeah. we're going to give them some money. We're going to lock them up. <laughs> don't you, don't you go, don't you do it. I think it was, uh, uh, Joe wasn't in yet. Yeah, nah, Joe, Joe wasn't in. Nah, yeah, I remember it vividly. Trump. <laughs> I remember vividly. Trump gave everybody a check and said, here you go. Pandemic Yo, ch- what? Fools at the <laughs> shop wild and just be like, yo, oh, yeah. let me get everything. Yo, that shit was like the $80 a good... $80 eighth, I never buy it. Let me get it. That was like a good dream, you know? COVID is a good dream. I got a honey right here. It was a good run. Ah, uh, I used to <laughs> drive to... There was no traffic ever, anywhere? I used to drive to Malibu in 15 minutes and buy coffee. <laughs> Quick. Come back. Quick, bro. Yeah. Nice. That, no I, I, I remember that the traffic was crazy, huh? COVID time. All right. Good times. Well, shit, before we get out of here, bro, I think we've asked you about everything and everything, bro. And and um, again, I, I told you this off camera, but I want you to think of this podcast, bro. Anytime you want to announce something, think of us as a platform where you could come on here, bro, and get your word. Because we're here for the com- community and by the community. And that's everything you represent, bro. No, I appreciate that. And I was telling uh, DJ earlier that like most of the podcast and the podcast space, obviously it's such an important part of just documenting yeah. life. Yeah. It's the new way of documenting life. But most people, like, stop at a few episodes. Ten episodes in, they think yeah. they're going to go viral. Right. There's a lot of work that goes behind this. Yes, sir. The prep work. So, obviously, people are at home, and they're like, oh, it's just. It's you just, just put your mic and just mic. talk, yeah. But uh, you guys are doing good work, so keep it up. And I'm here to support you guys however we can, collaborate, get different people that make uh to tell their story, right? Yes, and sir. Kind of like sharing each other's exactly. story on one platform. This is here to share your story, it. man, especially Thank for you, the WE community. We really appreciate that, bro. Thank you, bro. And again, uh, super pleasure meeting you today, bro. Likewise. And you got any shout outs all the for work anybody you're, you're, that you know? Putting in too, bro. Yeah, well, shout out to the whole team, all my partners, all, all our team members at LA Cannabis Co., uh, Coachella Canna Club, my partners at Chick Next Door, all my business ventures. You know, I feel like business is such a big part of at least my life um, that. My business relationships uh, with all my team members are the, some of the most important relationships in, in my life. Yeah. So it's a big part of uh, what I do. So shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to them, man. Big respect to that. You got any, you got any shout outs? Shit, nah, just shout out to Armin and the whole, you know, t- the vibe we're here, man. I'm, I appreciate you inviting the Is It Smoking crew. Hope to do another episode. Hell you know, yeah. shout out to Ernesto doing his thing. Shout out to DJ doing his thing. Shout out to David. <laughs> Shout out to everybody, man. Shit, everybody need their flowers. Yo, let's get Is It Smoking on three. One, two, three. Is, Is It Smoking? Yeah. Yo, and that's a wrap, man. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for supporting Is It Smoking Podcast. If you're ever in the Coachella Valley, you know what to call, man. Make sure to ask my man. Let him know Is It Smoking Podcast sent you. We out.